Hello there, Aries. Welcome to your February 2020 tarot reading. So, thank you so much for joining me. Um, now, let's just go straight into your reading because um, I saw a very interesting image. So, first of all, um, what I'm seeing is kind of like a New Year celebration, okay? I'm, I'm seeing like a temple, like a Buddhist temple in the background. And uh, it's kind of blurry because it's like far in the distance in the background. And in the foreground, where my eyes are focused, is a sprig of uh, cherry blossom, okay? And so it seems to me like this might be some, some Asian country that we're looking at based on the way the um, temple and the pagodas are. It's not too vertical, so I don't think it's like Southeast Asia because uh, the way the architecture is built, it, the pagodas are usually, you know, vertically oriented. It's a little bit flatter, but it's still a temple. So it might be, it might be a, like a Chinese temple or maybe even a Japanese temple. I'm not really sure. I can't make out uh, the details because it's blurry. And then in the foreground, like I said, it's a sprig of um, cherry blossom. Now, if, for those of you who are not familiar with it, but um, cherry blossoms or cherry trees, they lose their uh, leaves during the winter months, okay? And in the springtime, um, they emerge with uh, little sprouts of leaves and blossom, okay? And so, like, the, the, um, the end of the frost and also, like, the um, beginning of warmer weather, that's when they start to emerge and start to bloom, okay? What I'm seeing here is a major festival, some type of a festival, which might, I believe, might be, like, Chinese New Year or something like that. And uh, when I saw this, I was checking the dates on Google to make sure, you know, so it, it's like around January 25th, okay? And I'm doing this video, today is the 18th, I believe. I'm sorry, today is the 20th that I'm doing this video. And so I might be picking up some energies there early for those of you who might be watching this early. Um, so anyways, the, the point is, uh, there's a big celebration. Everyone is flocking to the temple to pray, uh, to meet other people, and also to, you know, begin their new year with this ritual of prayer and gratitude and get together and, and, and celebration. So there's a massive celebration happening in the background. And with this sprig of cherry blossom, what I see happening in the foreground is that it starts to regain its color. It's, it goes from like brown to, um, you know, green. So like the, the leaves are beginning to sprout from this singular branch. And then the blossoms come in and they start to bloom. And the bloom attracts the, um, the bees nearby. So I see the bees buzzing in. And these are like bumblebee. They're black and yellow. They're um, kind of buzzing around. They're rolling, digging their... Um, I guess their hands into the buds of the flower to scoop out the uh, pollen and then afterwards I see like birds coming by and when I saw this I was thinking immediately about the birds and the bees okay and so I started shuffling out the cards and that's why I feel like this reading is very love relationship oriented okay there's a few, you know, snippets of information when it comes to your work and your career and things like that. But the reading is very much oriented towards um, relationship, okay? So that's just a preface, but um, let me go on with the reading. So it's funny because um, in Pisces reading, I was, uh, I saw the, the opposite. I saw like a flower that had already uh, faded away, that had already died. It, it's like dried up, it's shriveled up. And then uh, we have like a, a rewind where it starts to stand up right, it starts to regain its color and it starts to bloom. Whereas I feel for you, it's not like a rewind. It's a natural progression of something happening in your life where I feel like spring is here. This is a time for you to celebrate something is in the picture for you that is really bountiful and beautiful and quite significant because it signified to me that you know there has been a state of dormancy something was very dormant and then now it's springing to life okay 
And the the way that this is depicted, the, the first card that flew out here, we have here the Two of Cups, and this is probably the most beautiful card in the deck. This is a, a situation that denotes like uh, companionship, okay? Two people who not only love each other, but they get along really well. They like each other. They don't get mad at each other for a long time. There's mutual understanding and reciprocity, okay? So this is a card where it's like the, the most exalted love, where it's not just about passion and chemistry and infatuation and physical attraction. This is like loving somebody for who they are and vice versa. They love you for who you are. They love your soul, not just what you have to give them, not, what you, not just what you look like. They see something real and magical and tangible inside of you. And so I feel like this is a really strong union. And then we also have the chariot, which is acceleration, speed, achievement. And so what I literally see in both of these cards as, um, you know, this is the first card that flew out of the, um, the deck. I feel like there is a major acceleration here when it comes to either some of you are taking a relationship to the next level. Uh, some of you might have, you know, the chariot is about discipline and determination. It's about moving forward despite all the obstacles laid out in our way. So I feel like you and a significant other have overcome so much in your respective lives and also in your relationship in order to stay together, in order to be together, in order to progress in this relationship. And I feel like, you know, one partner might have given up and then the other one was um, either carrying the, the weight of the relationship and then there might have been times when that partner was like um, going through, you know, their emotional slums and their difficulties in life and you stepped up. Okay, so I feel like it's a relationship where it's very uh, reciprocal. When one par partner is down, the other partner steps up. Okay, and let me just say, Aries, um, as the first sign of the zodiac, as the first, um, you know, and, and, and your astrological sign, it rules the head, okay? It's the first sign of the zodiac, it rules the head, and it is all about the, the self, who I am, what mark I want to make in the world, what defines me, how do I want to project myself out into the world. And so your sign is very, very self-focused. Having enough financially, having enough materially, having, you know, uh, being able to take care of yourself. You're, you're very much about self-sufficiency, self-control. And I also, not so much self-control, I though that phrasing is wrong. I want to say self-sufficiency, uh, having enough for yourself, being able to take care of yourself. I feel like you pride yourself on those things. And then I feel like you have a very strong sense of individuality and independence. And also, I would say a lack of patience as well, a lack of it. And so it might be very difficult for you to be in a relationship, especially a harmonious relationship and especially a long-term relationship. So I feel for many of you, you know, when we love somebody, we, um, we always think about, you know, till death do us part, right? Like we do everything within our power to keep the other person, to make them happy, to move the relationship along. And so I feel like you have had to overcome a lot of, um, I, I guess, like self hangups in order to achieve a successful relationship with another person. OK, uh, having to, you know, on days when you're just like, I want to just stay at home and, and do, watch these movies or I just want to go out with my girlfriends or my uh, guy friends and just have like a girl's night or a guy's night. But I feel like you've had to learn to compromise. You've had to learn a lot about relationships to get yourself to this point where, you know, it's all about compromise. It's all about like um, doing the things that we don't want to do because our partner needs us. OK, saying the things that we're hesitant about saying because our partner needs it. OK, controlling the self. Um, in order to achieve peace and harmony also in a relationship. Um, 
I feel like Aries people are, are quite observant, okay? And I feel like there are a lot of things that you see and um, other people see these things too. So you're not the only ones that see these things. But you're, out of all the signs, you're the most likely to say it out loud. Okay, so if you see somebody acting up, I feel like, you know, out of all the signs, you're the most likely person or candidate or sign to kind of like point out the obvious or, you know, um, talk about the elephant in the room when everyone else is like avoiding it or skirting the issue. So I feel that you're very bold and you're very uh, uh, brave with the things that you do and the things that you say. But a lot of the times, you know, when we're dealing with another person, it's all about learning to uh, blend well with another person. It doesn't mean, you know, losing out on your individuality, but it's all about how we can phrase things delicately, how we can be a little bit more sensitive and understanding when it comes to another person. And how we can be, you know, how we can try our best even to maintain harmony in this, re in, in our relationships. And so I feel like there has been some major, major growth spurt happening for you as it relates to your relationship sector. How to be a better partner, how to be more understanding, how to be more emotionally available, and especially how to accommodate another person. Because with this card, once again, it's not the passion and the chemistry and the infatuation and the sexual or physical attraction that moves the relationship along. This card is a lot more than that. It's about harmony. It's about seeing eye to eye. It's about having commonalities, okay? We don't always have to agree with, with another person 100%. But we also need to be conscientious about, you know, what battles are, are, are worth fighting for, okay? What's better left alone? In the greater scheme of things, you know, does this small petty argument um, affect the relationship as a whole? Or are we best, you know, kind of like laying it to rest? So I feel like there has been some major, major compromises between you and another person. Because I feel like there has been many struggles in this relationship, many, many struggles, many difficulties. And um, if we look at this rhino, um, rhinos have like armor for skin, right? They have thick skin. I feel like you're dealing with a partner too that has very thick skin. They don't take things personally, okay? They're probably not a water sign, so not a Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio. Because with this thick armor, I feel like it's, it's a sign that um, looks at things a little bit more objectively. And I feel like your, your words, you know, sometimes they can cut a little bit for, for somebody with like thin skin. For someone who's very emotional or very sensitive, I feel like, you know, a lot of the times the things that you say might be hurtful to them. But I feel like you're dealing with a partner here. Thank God. They have thick skin. They've lived a lot. They've lived a lot. They've collected a lot of um, scars and, you know, life experience along the way. And then I also feel like your partner might be at a stage in their life where they're at the peak of their career. This is somebody who's a major player in their field. They know a lot of uh, things. They're possibly considered an expert. And then I'm also sensing this is somebody, once again, it's a relationship where with two people, you know, there's reciprocity. When p one partner is down, the other partner steps up. And it's done in a way where it's like very instinctive uh, without even asking. So I feel like for you, um, it's easier for you to play the role of the caretaker. If your partner is down, no doubt you're going to be in there and you're going to take care of things. You're going to run the household. You're going to, you know, take care of your partner. But if the shoe were on the other foot, Aries, it's really hard for you to be taken care of. You don't like it. You like to be independent. You like to come and go as you please. You don't want to answer to anybody. And then I also feel like you're, you're very self-sufficient. And you don't want to take that. I guess in your mind, it might feel like that submissive role. 
Okay, so there's something here where I feel like the ego is disallowing you to um, allow the other person to take care of you. It's disallowing you to accept reciprocity from another person. And I feel like this is a really good person. I feel like this is somebody who really understands you. They understand that you have a lot of pride that you would never ask. They also understand as well that um, you need certain things. And I, I want to say like, I feel for some of you, they're, they're saying like luxury things to be happy. Okay. And I'm seeing that with this Empress card. And the Empress card is about beauty. It's about like the external things, right? Beauty, comfort, uh, a certain level of um, like living life comfortably, you know, having disposable income, being able to get your nails done, being able to get your hair done, being able to, you know, have like date nights where you go to a place that's uh, a little bit more expensive to be able to really enjoy the night. And I, I feel like for some of you, you've worked really hard to a achieve this. And so something might have happened that, that might have um, set you back a little bit when it comes to your financial goals. Something might have set you off unexpectedly when it comes to your savings. So whatever the situation is, I feel like there might have been a little bit of a financial loss or a financial dip. And at this point, the partner is wanting to step up for you. But I feel like it's hard for you to, you know, accept whatever the, off the, the, the partner is offering. Okay? So I do see a little bit of, like, um, discomfort, I feel, from your end. But I can assure you that... If the shoe were on the other foot, you would willingly step in and, and help your partner. So now, if, if there has been, you know, something like going on in your life that might have set you back financially or you might have had concerns or you might be worried, let the partner help you, okay? Let things be reciprocal. We always think of reciprocal in terms of the, the positive, right? Like... I give you this for your birthday, you give me something from, for my birthday, okay? Um, I pay for the movies, you pay for the dinner. Um, I Uber us there, you Uber us back. So we always think of it as like an equal exchange. But we never think of it in terms of lack, okay? Like when one partner is down, the other partner steps up. And then when you're down, allow your partner to take care of you, okay? Um, I feel like it's really hard for you to do. And I also feel like in the past, you have always, always play the role of the caretaker, okay? You're very solutions-oriented. If somebody's down, if someone's sick, you come in with the medicine. If somebody is, um, you know, having financial difficulties, you come in with a financial offer. You come in with financial assistance. So it's like you've always lived your life with an open hand. A lot of people might say, okay, like that Aries, they're, they're not very thoughtful or they're a little bit self-absorbed. But I feel like for Aries people, if Ari, the Aries person is aware, oh, this person needs this, they will like go out of their way to make sure that the person get what they need. And so I feel like Aries, um, once you are made aware that somebody needs something, you really go out of your way. And especially if it's somebody that you love, okay? Like family members, even if um, it's like, even if it's a love-hate relationship with family members, I feel like you're still willingly ready to help, okay? Once that need is, is um, once you are aware of that need, you will go out of your way. But I guess like it might be a little bit harder for Aries people to gauge what is needed, what is necessary, what does the other person really, really need. Um, it's a little bit harder. It's a little bit more nuanced and it's a little bit harder for Aries uh, people to, you know, um, to understand what the other person needs. But once that need is there or is made is, is out in the open, you're very willing 
and ready to fulfill that need. And so whatever you need right now, allow the other partner to step up for you and allow that partner to really take care of you. I feel like there is definitely reciprocity here. And I feel like you're being taken care of. You're being waited on hand and foot. You're being... Um, I'm almost feeling like this cradle, okay? Somebody's really... It's like you're the apple of their eye. They're cradling you and they, they, they treasure you. It's a very delicate situation and I feel like they treasure you. And so allow this to come in, you know, just like, just, just allow it and just sit back because you're in good hands, all right? So <clears throat> when I saw the, uh, the cherry uh, branch, like the cherry blossom branch, and it's, uh, it's barren and it doesn't have anything on it, and then all of a sudden the, the little leaves and the little blossoms start to sprout. I believe the blossoms come out and then they wilt and they die off and they drop off and then the leaves start to come out and then the fruit starts to, um, the tree starts to fruit, okay? And so it's the blossoms and what it's really saying here is uh, the springtime, okay? The birds and the bees, the attraction. So I feel like this is a month where for many of you, especially if you're in a relationship, I'm sorry, especially if you're single, um, you might be looking around you. And I feel for many of you who are single, you're waiting for, it, it's, it's like a situation where you know your worth and you know what you're not willing to settle for. You know what you don't want, especially in relationship partners or even like people that you might be casually dating. You're very picky at this point, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, what I see is uh, I'm seeing somebody here. They're looking around, and all around them, everybody's coupling up, okay? Uh, best friend is getting married two months from now and sending their um, wedding invite. Um, like a sister is getting married and about to move in. Uh, another friend is like moving in with their significant other. Another couple is like celebrating their 10th year anniversary. I feel like you're in the midst of all of these uh, relationship celebrations. And I don't feel like you're looking on with envy. I feel like you're looking on very happy for these couples and the milestones that they've reached in their lives. And you're thinking, you know, oh, I can't wait when it's my turn. You know, so there's like a lot of hope here and a lot of just like, I don't want to say like it's uh, sitting, you're, I, I don't feel like you're sitting around because who has time for that? I don't feel like you're sitting around daydreaming of the one. But I feel like you are setting your standards very high. And you want somebody phenomenal and amazing in order to match your standards and match what you have to give and to be able to match you where you're at. So many of you, once again, this Empress energy are kind of like at a peak of your career, okay? Your income is flowing. You are also in a position where you're working possibly with the sun in the public eye. You have a lot of um, charisma. You um, are, are highly regarded. You're seen as a powerful figure in your work, in your career, in your, um, your public image is just um, on the forefront. It's almost like somebody who's actually quite famous and your reputation, you know, precedes you. Like people could say your name and then everyone knows who you are. So for some of you, you might be very famous, quite famous. For others, um, I feel like there are, there's a lot of buzz, a lot of buzz around you. There's a lot of att uh, attention on you. There's mm, Okay, so you're setting your standards really high, possibly because you're in the public limelight and you're careful about your reputation, who you date, how long you date them. And so for some of you, there will be, I, I feel like there might be a lot of... Um, opportunities for dating for you know mingling for for like light social dating but you're forgoing these opportunities because I feel like you have your standards and you have like 
a little bit of public scrutiny. So you're really cautious about who you get your yourself involved with. You're really cautious about who you're photographed with, who you are seen with, who you are interacting with. So not only with love relationships, but also your social circle. You're very cautious about preserving your image, not in the spirit of vanity, but in the spirit of, you know, I have my pick. I have um, my standards. I have a lot of people who might be fawning over me, but I'm choosing to keep myself single. I'm choosing my uh, to keep myself for the one. I'm choosing to even, I want to say, hold out for the one. Um, I don't see that there is any lack of people in your life, okay? Lack of suitors, lack of people coming towards you, lack of attention uh, directed towards you. So there's a lot of buzz around you. A lot of people who are interested. And then I also feel there's just uh, a lot of attention. So I have here the lovers. I have the two of cups here that I showed you earlier. I have the six of cups. So you're not in a position where there's a lack of suitors at all. For some of you, you might have a person coming back here from the past, okay? Um, what I'm feeling is, um, let's talk about this past person. I feel like for many of you, this is somebody that is very outstanding, okay? And for whatever reason, uh, life choices, career paths, um, as well as like, like ideological differences might have ended the relationship. Um, I don't see a parting on bad terms. I don't feel like you and this person um, parted ways um, in a uh, in in like a a. I'm sorry, I I can't find the word. Um, so I don't feel like you and this person parted ways on bad terms. I don't feel like there was a major blowout, a major fight, and you know you stopped talking. I I don't feel that at all. I feel like this is a person, oops, I swapped the card, sorry. So the lovers is right here, and the six of cups is right here. So I feel like you and this person, um, maybe the career path took you on different, uh, to this different areas. Maybe you wanted to live here, they wanted to live here. One person likes the cold, the other person likes, um, you know, tropical climate. One person wanted to pursue a career in this field, which takes them, you know, somewhere else. Another person wanted a quieter life. One person might have wanted, you know, like um, a, a, a position in the limelight, might want fame, might want... I'm hearing somebody might be a politician, and the, the other person was just like, no, I, I don't want to grow up, I don't want our kids to grow up in the public, um, under public scrutiny. And then I feel like one person um, left an area for a job and then the other person went elsewhere. And so I feel like it was, you know, life that might have um, driven the two of you apart. And so through no fault of your own, I feel that this might be a person that you're really thinking about. And with the Six of Cups, with the Sun and the Empress... I feel like, you know, if the um, situation were different or if, if the circumstances were different, this was somebody that you could actually see yourself being married to or getting married to. This is someone who's very special in your eyes. They're quite attractive. And I've mentioned this before for you, um, Aries. Yeah, I've, I've mentioned it for Aries multiple times. I feel like, especially in 2018, you have some really attractive exes. Um, the person is very attractive. This is someone who loves animals. They have a warm heart. They're very generous. They're very loving, very kind. Okay, someone who's genuinely really, really kind. And with the sun, um, I feel like they're very intelligent. They're very successful. Very successful. And I feel like you're looking at this person um, or thinking about them. And I feel a little bit of regret from your end about, you know, I should have put more effort in. I should have tried to make things work. I should have uh, exhausted all possibility before calling it quits. 
I should have, um, I wish I have another chance. So I feel like you might be wondering about this person. I do see there's communication between you with the sun and the hummingbird. Birds are messengers. And, you know, the, the hummingbird is a lot like a bee. It buzzes, okay, because of the flap of its wings. So, like, the, there's, there's buzz around this person. So the person might be the one who's very famous. Or there's, like, communication. I'm hearing, like, a, you know, the, the phone that's set on vibrate. Uh, somebody's calling, and it since it's on vibrate, it's going to buzz, okay? And then I'm also hearing as well, like, um, the buzzing, a notification bell on somebody's phone, like, through social media, through some type of uh, instant messaging, through, it's like communication through electronic channels that might be coming in between you and this person. Um, communication while you're sleeping, while you're away, but I feel like there is a sense of um, a little bit of regret from your end. Like, I wish I've, you know, done more. I wish things were different. And so I feel like you kind of hold this person in high regard. And once again, you know, you're not sitting there pining over it. I, I don't feel like your life is at a standstill for you because once again, there's still a bunch of suitors coming in left and right, trying to get your attention, trying to even, I feel like, um, just coming in regardless of whether or not you're single or in a relationship. I feel like you, you have your share of suitors, okay? Um, and I feel like this person that is on your mind, um, so like, it, it's almost like they're 100%, 100 perfect. Like they're very, very, you know, no one's perfect. We're humans. But this person is very, very close to being perfect. I feel like they're attractive. They're very intelligent and successful. Um, they have a pure, like a, a pureness about them where they're not naive, but they're not jaded, okay? Like they believe in human goodness, but they're not naive to the point where they can be duped. I feel like they have a healthy dose. They have a, a really good balance of optimism about them. And Aries people, you guys like being around people who are optimistic. People who are like vibrant and fun. Um, it takes a lot for you to be around like a Debbie Downer, someone who's very pessimistic or, or super negative or, you know, just um, someone who's like, you don't like being around people who don't enjoy life, okay? Because you you understand, of all signs, you understand that life is short, so we should seize the day. We should grab opportunities. We should live as best as we can, seize the moment. And, and so I feel like, you know, this is somebody who makes you feel very alive when you're with them. They're very inspiring to be with. And it was uh, circumstances that brought an end to this relationship or this connection. It was through no fault of yours or theirs. So I feel like it, it parted on, on, on good terms. And I feel like there's going to be a lot of back and forth communication between you and this person. And then I also feel like there is a little bit of regret. I wish I'd done things differently. I wonder what they're up to. So I feel like you're thinking about this person. And then before you know it, I do have a new connection that is going to be coming into the picture, okay? We have here, at the center of the spread, um, the Six of Cups, the nostalgia, that past person, is right on top of this card. And with this card, is truth and clarity. There's some information that is going to be coming out um, regarding this person. There's going to be contact and communication, and I feel like there's going to be a lot of um, revelation regarding your feelings about this person, regarding conversations, regarding, you know, even an opportunity to reconnect. Okay, once again, this is like the bird, the messenger coming through with a message, but there's something on his beak which indicates to me like an offering, an offer something tangible, 
um, and maybe even like being able to see this person face to face. If you have an opportunity to see this person face to face, you should tell them whatever it is that you've been thinking about. If you have some regrets, if you want to get back together, if you want to see them again, if you want to give it another try, because I feel like with the, the justice card, it's very reciprocal. Okay, so I feel like you're not the only one that is thinking about this. They themselves are also thinking about it. So I guess, you know, that's a little bit of a nudge for you, Aries, to go for it, to, to you know, put in, um, to, to say what you've been thinking about. Because I feel like they're feeling the same way, you know. I feel like they're the one that got away from you. And from their perspective, you could have been the one that got away for them. Um, I feel the way that they look at you, though, is they feel you have a lot of options. They feel that you could be... Okay, so they feel that you are not uh, loyal or, and not 100% honest. Okay? They feel like you have a lot of people uh, around you, and so they don't trust that you are 100% into them. They don't trust that you're keeping your attention exclusively on them. And they might not trust that you're dating them exclusively. And so I feel like they might have played it cool. I feel that they might have, um, you know, not taken you seriously. Because you have a very childlike, innocent way about you. And so I feel that they might not believe that they're the only one that you're talking to, even though you held them in really high regard. And so there should be a conversation here. There's an opportunity to revive this, to give it some more time. Because I feel like no one did anyone wrong. There was no cheating. There was no backstabbing. And I feel that you really like this person. And, the, you know, vice versa. They, they really like you. Um, I feel like the relationship might be lacking, like, an emotional connection. And an emotional connection, okay, so let's kind of unpack that a little bit because I feel like a lot of people think it's one way, but in fact it's another way, okay? So having a common upbringing, for example, you know, so let's say you and another person, you both came from like a really poor family and you've had to hustle, you've had to work really, really, really hard, right? Having like a common... Um, having like a common uh, background story does not create an emotional connection. It helps to understand where the other person came from. Having a common cultural background also doesn't really guarantee an emotional connection. And so I feel like there's something very similar between you and this person. And yet it's like two people having very similar upbringing but one person veers off on a different path and the other person, vice versa, you know, on a different path. And so just because you have that commonality, it doesn't mean that it's a, it's, it's a guaranteed emotional connection. It makes it easier for you. Well, it gives you a lot of topics to talk about. It gives you like a common ground, a common purpose, a common drive. But that emotional connection, you know, no matter how much you force it, it's not there. The emotional connection comes about when two people really open up, okay, and, and like rather than talking about all the things that make us great, okay, this is what I like, this is what I've achieved, this is what I have done, um, the emotional connection is when we open up when we are at our most vulnerable, okay, and I also feel like there is a, a, a situation here where you have to wait for the other person to open up when they are at their most vulnerable as well. So it's a two-way street. It's reciprocity. Okay? When we open up to another person at a time where things are very bad for us or at a low point, we form that emotional connection with the other person because they're going to ask questions. They're going to be emotionally available to us. But then in order for them to feel 
that emotional connection with us it has to be reversed they have to be willing and ready to open themselves up when they're vulnerable and you have to be emotionally available to kind of like help them through that process and that's how the emotional connection can you know get established okay um, as an air sign I feel like people talk all the time about emotional connections and I never understood it until I started doing a lot of tarot and I feel like you know th the message here is you can't force it but it has to be a two-way street you open up and then they open up and then that's the beginning of an emotional connection and so I feel like there there's somebody here this person you're thinking about they're very perfect like on paper they are very perfect they they're self-sufficient they take care of themselves they don't need anybody really but you know that's all a facade not that they're not like that I feel like they're pretty close to perfect and they're very strong and they're very capable but you know there are times we're all humans there are times when they're low too and I feel like they might have come to you at a time I'm seeing them prickling you like Hey, wake up, Aries. I want to talk to you about this. I want to tell you this thing. I, I want to have a conversation about this. So I feel like they're buzzing around you and they're trying to tell you something um, about a time where they really needed your support. And I feel like this, you might be that bear fallen asleep after he's eaten the honey. Okay, so it's like me first, me first. Let me take care of my physical needs. And so they're, they're like prodding you and poking you. Aries, wake up. Wake up. Listen to this. And I feel like you didn't give them the attention at that time that they really needed. And so I feel like this person might have pulled away. And I feel like the emotional connection was kind of like squashed before it had an opportunity to take off. So you might have been wondering, you know, what happened to that person? Why are they gone? Why did they disappear? Why did they pull away? Why are they not into me? I feel like there might have been something that you might not be aware of. And like I said, awareness is a very big word in this, um, in this reading, in this spread. It might be hard for you to reach that state of awareness, but once you are aware, once it has been brought to your attention, you will do whatever within your power to fix things. Once you are aware that someone is sad, you will try to cheer them up. Once you are aware that somebody has fallen on hard times and they need your help financially, you're 100% going to, you know, take the, the first bus or take the first drive out in order to be there for that person. But I feel like you're not aware of this. And when you're not aware, you you don't fix things. I feel like they were trying to make a connection with you. They were trying to tell you something. And I feel like you might have turned them away. <clears throat> so you know let, let's think about the buzzing okay the buzzing of the bees the buzzing of insects a lot of the times when we're busy trying to concentrate or trying to do something of a serious nature and and you know people are talking and buzzing or insects are around and buzzing at us it can be very irritating right and we tend to like you know swat it away swat them away and we don't want to hear it and so you might have turned them away at a point where they have something very important to share with you and I felt like because of it that emotional connection didn't have a chance to establish itself I feel that we have here the king of cups the king of cups is about emotional maturity okay this is like the most emotionally available and emotionally mature sign of um, the entire spread or the entire deck for for that matter and this is all about emotional intelligence it's being aware it's being able to like read body language and and to know when someone is sad and when someone is um, needs to to talk or when someone is sad and they want to be left alone 
or when someone is upset and they want to be held versus when someone is upset and they're ready to scream and slam doors. So being emotionally in tune to all those nuances, the, the nuances in it's, it's all about knowing the other person really well and knowing how they emotionally react. I feel like there's somebody here, you feel like you might have a good grasp on, uh, on you know, your understanding of them. But I can say, in all honesty, you're scratching the surface. Um, I feel like you have an, an understanding of maybe human character or human um, reactions, but I feel like what you're seeing is a lot more nuanced than you think. And so I feel that you have to dig a little bit deeper so that you can understand this person. And you have to be a little bit more aware that, you know, just because we're all angry, it doesn't mean we're going to lash out. Some people, um, when they're angry, they retreat. Okay, they, they don't want to be overwhelmed with anger and, and start like throwing, start slamming doors. So they, they just uh, excuse themselves and retreat and, and, you know, they don't want to come out from their shell. And then others, when they're angry, there's going to be fire and fury. And that's how you behave, Aries. When you're upset and angry, everyone will hear it. Everyone within that 10 mile radius will will hear and feel your wrath, right? But I feel like your partner or the person that you're struggling to understand, um, when they're angry, they might shut down. There might be ghosting. There might be no contact. There might be no communication. Um, and then also... They, I feel like this person behaves in a way that is not stereotypical. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm sensing somebody might have a poker face. I'm also sensing like scratching the surface. Your understanding of them needs to deepen because I feel like you don't really understand them well. And what we have here with this King of Cups here is about delving or diving a little bit deeper into the emotional realm where this person resides and looking at them and meeting them and, and having conversation, you know, at this level. It's uncomfortable and we don't want to be stuck in this level for too long. But if it's a, con if it's a serious conversation, it needs to be had at this level. And I have here the Four of Cups, Four of Shells. And this is about mulling over our options. This is like wading into the water, step by step, getting deeper and deeper and deeper in order to understand, okay? In, in order to have like an emotional understanding of this person. So there will be many, many options that are uh, in store for you. And then I'm also sensing as well, you might be dating multiple people. There's definitely one person that will really stand out. And I feel like you're like this crow. Fighting off all the suitors that are coming your way with this baton, right? Like fending them off, fighting them off. Because there is somebody here that you have behind you that is you're defending. So I feel that you have somebody here that uh, really... They really stand out, okay? I'm sensing strongly water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. And I'm also seeing as well um, Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini. And especially the Gemini card here. So you have some good things coming your way, Aries. Um, I feel like, you know, if there's somebody that you've been thinking heavily about, there, there needs to be communication and, and there needs to be that serious conversation. So aim to, you know, dive a little bit deeper because everything up here seems a little bit superficial. Dive a little bit deeper. Get to the root of this. Get to, to the point where you can form that emotional connection. And I feel like that's going to go the distance, okay? I wish you all the best and have a wonderful, wonderful Valentine's Day too in February for those who are celebrating. Um, 
if you are interested in a reading, um, I have a link in the description box below for a colleague of mine. Her name is Bridget. She is a phenomenal reader. I highly recommend her. Um, a lot of my clients have emailed and uh, they've said amazing things about her. So if you'd like to book a reading for yourself or for someone you know who might need spiritual advice, the link is in the box below. You can click on it and you can set the time so you can schedule an appointment with her directly, okay? I will talk to you guys soon. Take care of yourself and uh, enjoy this month. It's going to be amazing. Take care of yourself. I'll, I'll see you next month. Bye-bye.